In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My sisters and brothers, we gather now on this 18th Sunday in Ordinary Time. And in the Gospel today, Jesus tells the parable of the rich farmer. And in doing so, he challenges all of us to look at the priorities in our lives, to put God first above all things. And we pause now for a moment to truly prepare our hearts to celebrate these wondrous and sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you are the only lasting treasure. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you call us to share our resources with the poor and the needy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you lead us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Draw near to your servants, O Lord, and answer their prayers with unceasing kindness, that for those who glory in you as their creator and guide, you may restore what you have created and keep safe what you have restored. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Ecclesiastes. Vanity of vanities, says Kaholeth. Vanity of vanities, all things are vanity. Here is one who has labored with wisdom and knowledge and skill, and yet to another who has not labored over it, he must leave the property. This also is vanity and a great misfortune. For what profit comes to a man from all the toil and anxiety of heart with which he has labored under the sun? All his days, sorrow and grief in his occupation, even at night his mind is not at rest. This also is vanity. The word of the Lord. A responsorial psalm. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. You turn men back to dust, saying, Return, O children of men, for a thousand years in your sight are as yesterday now that it is past, or as a watch of the night. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. You make an end of them in their sleep. The next morning they are like the changing grass, which at dawn springs up anew, but by evening wilts and fades. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, if you were raised with Christ, seek what is above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Think of what is above, not of what is on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ your life appears, then you too will appear with him in glory. 
Put to death, then, the parts of you that are earthly, immortality, impurity, passion, evil desire, and the greed that is idolatry. Stop lying to one another, since you have taken off the old self with its practices and have put on the new self, which is being renewed for knowledge in the image of its creator. Here there is not Greek and Jew, circumcision and uncircumcision, barbarian, Scythian, slave, free, but Christ is all and in all. The word of the Lord. My sisters and brothers, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Someone in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, tell my brother to share the inheritance with me. He replied to him, Friend, who appointed me as your judge and arbitrator? Then he said to the crowd, Take care to guard against all greed, for though one may be rich, one's life does not consist of possessions. Then he told them a parable. There was a rich man whose land produced a bountiful harvest. He asked himself, what shall I do? For I do not have space to store my harvest. And he said, this is what I shall do. I shall tear down my barns and build larger ones. There I shall store all my grain and other goods. And I shall say to myself, now as for you, you have so many good things stored up for many years. Rest, eat, drink, be merry. But God said to him, you fool, this night your life will be demanded of you. And the things you have prepared, to whom will they belong? Thus it will be for all who store up treasures for themselves, but are not rich in what matters to God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My friends, the rich man in today's parable thought he had it all figured out. Not exactly. There was one important thing that the rich man had not planned for, and that was his reckoning before God. God said to him, you fool, this very night your life is being demanded of you, and the things you have prepared Whose will they be? My friends, the rich farmer is is not a fool because he is wealthy or because he saves for the future, but because he appears to live only for himself and because he believes that he can secure his life with his abundant possessions. The rich man learns the hard way what the writer of the book of Ecclesiastes realized, quite simply, that you can't take it with you. All that we work so hard for in our lives will end up in someone else's hands. Vanity, emptiness, materialism. Jesus today warns us all about greed. Our reality today is that no matter how much we have, 
we are always aware of the things that we don't have. We are bombarded by marketing wizards whose job it is to convince us of all the products we need to complete our lives. And so we never feel like we quite have enough. Like the rich farmer, we can be tempted to think that large amounts of money and possessions stored up will make us secure. Sooner or later, however, we learn that no amount of wealth or property can secure us. No amount of wealth can protect us from a genetically inherited disease, for instance, or from a tragic accident. No amount of wealth can keep our relationships healthy and our families from falling apart. In fact, wealth and property can easily drive a wedge between family members, as in the case of the brothers fighting over their inheritance at the beginning of today's gospel. Most importantly, no amount of wealth can secure our lives with God. In fact, Jesus repeatedly warns that wealth can get in the way of our relationship with God. He said clearly, take care, be on guard against all kinds of greed, for one's life does not consist in the abundance of possessions. It is not that God doesn't want us to, to save for our retirement or our future needs. It is not that God doesn't want us to eat, drink, and be merry and enjoy what God has given us. We know from the Gospels that Jesus himself spent time eating and drinking with people and enjoying life. But he was also so very, very clear about actually where his true security lies. It is all about priorities. It is about who is truly the God of our lives. It is about how we invest our lives and the gifts that God has given to us. It is about how we live our lives fundamentally aligned toward ourselves and our passing desires, or do we live our lives toward God and our neighbor, towards God's mission for us to help bless and redeem our world? The truth is, our lives and possessions are not our own. They belong to God. We are merely stewards of them for the time that God has given us on this earth. The scriptures this Sunday call us all to look beyond this world. It calls us in the words of St. Paul to seek what is truly above. It calls us to be more than we are. In the words of St. Francis, calls us to live fully, to choose to leave a positive mark on this world. And it throws down this challenge for you and for me. What are we doing with the time that we have been given? What are we doing to ensure that we leave a positive mark on this world and in the lives of those that we are called to serve and to love? My friends, today, in the words of the psalmist, let us allow God to teach us to number our days aright, to live lives that he wants us to, and to make our time rich in what matters to God. Each of us, if we only choose, can do so. Who can predict what God has planned for us today, tonight, or tomorrow? But what we do know, with God, we have everything that we need. Amen. And together now we pray the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell, and on the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, 
the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. My sisters and brothers, with hearts turned to the Lord, we present our prayers and our needs with confidence. For Pope Francis and all church leaders, may the Spirit continue to guide and inspire them and keep them faithful to Christ and his gospel. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. <clears throat> For leaders of all nations and peoples, may they be guided by the Almighty in the just use of power. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are persecuted for their faith in Christ, may God's Holy Spirit uphold and strengthen them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, may Jesus, the divine physician, restore them to the fullness of life and health and liberate them from all afflictions. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for our beloved dead, may they receive the reward of a life well spent and come to share in the fullness of Christ's glory. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty God, you listen with love to the cry of your people. Hear the prayers we ask today through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Through the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. O Lord, wash away my iniquities. Cleanse me from all of my sins. Pray now, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be pleasing and acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Graciously sanctify these gifts, O Lord, we pray and accepting the oblation of this spiritual sacrifice, make of us an eternal offering to you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by his birth, he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state, and by his suffering, canceled out our sins. By his rising from the dead, he has opened the way to eternal life. And by ascending to you, O Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord God, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, Jesus took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. 
for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Michael, our Bishop, and all the clergy, the religious, and all your faithful people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. My friends, the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. And may that peace now enter your hearts and your homes and all with whom you share peace today. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have, Have mercy, mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have, Have mercy, mercy on us. us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant, Grant us peace. peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I, am I am not worthy, worthy that you should, should enter under, under my roof. roof. 
but only only say say the the word, and my my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. Accompany with constant protection, O Lord, those you renew with these heavenly gifts, and in your never-failing care for them, make them worthy of eternal redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. And our prayer now for Father Baker's canonization. Lord, you gave us your Your servant, servant, Nelson Baker, as an example of service service to the poor, homeless, and young. By Father Baker's ardent concern for those in need, inflame our hearts and lives with compassion for the poor, justice for the oppressed, hope for the troubled, and courage for those in doubt. We pray through the intercession of Our Lady of Victory, if it be your will, that your servant, Nelson Baker, may one day be canonized. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Our Lady of Victory, pray for us. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go now in peace to glorify the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God.